we are gonna build a Sonic the Hedgehog playing AI using the NEAT algorithm and OpenAI's retro libraries. Uh, my past episodes, we went through the envi- we set up the the OpenAI environment. We demonstrated a really simple way to interact with that. That's actually shown here on the screen. And we uh, installed Python Neat and tested it. Uh, there's tons to Python Neat. I recommend you guys go through the examples. There's so much to learn. It's nearly impossible to explain. I'm going to explain what I change from some of the default configuration files um, as I do it. Okay, so this episode we're actually going to we're going to set up the uh, the uh, Sonic AI. We don't really need Tut one here, so let's do Tut two actually. Save as. <gasps> don't look at my things. There we go. So there's Tut one. This is Tut two. It's not really, but hey, good. Um, I guess where we can. This is the uh, Wikipedia page for this stuff. This is the documentation. Uh, it's very good. Oh yeah, here's it explains what needs uh, graph viz and math plot, plot plot lib. Can't speak, guys. Those are hard words to say. This is a um, neat configuration file for a Zor example. Uh, we may refer to that, but I have already some examples done from my from my previous neat stuff. Okay, so here we go. We're going to first things first. We're going to import retro. Uh, we're going to import numpy because we actually will use that. Uh, we're going to import cv2 because we use that as well. We're going to import neat, which is the Python neat that we just installed. And we're going to import pickle so that we can save our network when we're done. Um, first, we're going to do our environment, retro what up make. We set this all up in uh, two episodes before. You guys can follow it there if you want. Sonic the Hedge Hog. Don't Genesis. For anyone who's only joined us here because it's the most interesting one, you get the name of this file from the Retro AI uh, folder. You have to get clone it, install it. That's we did all that in the first episode. But basically, it has to be this exact name, and then the state that you want to use is this name. So here we go. Green Hill Zone dot Act One as a follow up. Has anyone ever actually beat Sonic the Hedgehog the first one? <laughs> I never have. I play it a lot and then I just stop. I don't. I don't know something about it that it's like extremely fun for twenty minutes and then I hate my life. Um. Oh yeah, we gotta let's get code tutorials. Uh, again, I've went through all this before. We have a special environment just for this pip freeze. These are what is currently installed. So uh, there's the OpenAI retro library and some stuff that came with it, and the Python dash neat library. Where's that? Neat dash Python. That's the one. We need both of those to do what we're doing here. Okay, so here we go. Um, hmm. So the first thing you want to set up when you do your uh, neat library stuff is the config file. Uh, I'm going to copy paste some stuff here. The uh, this is kind of standard. Effectively, what this is is from the neat library. There's a config method which has uh, a default genome, default reproduction, default species set, and default stagnation. So all those things are set to default. We're not going to mess with it at all. But there is this config-feed forward um, thing that we need. So let me, now let me see. Give me one sec here, everybody. I'm just going to go get my uh, previous made config file. And uh, we're going to put that into our current tutorials. We'll put it right here. So this config.feedforward is this file here. You can name it whatever you want, but this is the one that we're working on right now. I have adapted one of the uh, example files from the Code Reclaimers repository. These guys right here. So for example, it's just, I'm not sure if it's this exact one, but it's one of these. 
So I've modified it a little bit, but I'll show you that right now. Uh, this is extremely important to Neat, so it's important that we go through it right off the bat here. Let's open her up. Where is it? Okay. So, let's see what we got in here. Uh, all of these subcategories are explained in great detail in the documentation. Again, I highly recommend you read it. It's very valuable. It's very useful. We have a fitness criterion, max fitness threshold of 100,000. Okay, so um, we'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. We have a population size of 20 because... Uh, <laughs> takes a long time and I want to go through the generations quicker so I picked a smaller one if you have if you parallelize this which is possible using a different library we'll maybe go into that later if people want uh, you can crank up the population size and then just parallelize it on your uh, you need multi-core CPUs though or multi-threaded I have it set to reset on extinction because neat is awesome but one of the problems with neat is uh it finds local maximum really well but not global maximum so i mean i i shouldn't speak i actually don't the way in my experience uh you'll end up maximizing on a certain set and it'll be really good getting to a point and they won't get any further so if you stagnate for a certain length of time it will just kill everybody and start over um, the default genome. So these are the activation function uh, options. If you guys don't know what activation functions are, you should go watch some videos on um, neural networks. I'll probably make some because in a future episode I'm going to do uh, some more open AI stuff, but I'm going to be using Keras to uh, do a similar kind of my own version of Neat. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Um, so this is a sigmoid function, that's just a specific math function. And the uh, these are each new node that gets inserted into a hidden layer randomly as the genomes are randomly generated, uh, defaults to a sigmoid. Uh, it can also mutate every generation between sigmoid and gauss. There's You can actually use all of these different types, but I find that some of them screw stuff up a little bit too much specifically uh, e the um, gym environment needs uh, like between 0 and 1 value specifically 0 or 1 and uh, some of these give you more than that or less than that you have to do more math to them I just it doesn't really matter you can just leave it at sigmoid if you want or or whatever you can also change this to random and then it'll pick any of the options that you've set to set to be random but I just I start let's for now we'll just start with sigmoid uh, node aggregation options these are the uh, way <laughs> ways the note this is more AI stuff I really don't want to explain it but there's this different options some product min max blah 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 I set it to random because who gives a heck who gives a heck the idea is that at the end of the day the neural network will learn the proper one to use for a sp specific thing that's the whole point behind this these neat algorithms I'm not going to explain this, it's just a bunch of stuff. Uh, these are super important, but I'm just going to leave it at the defaults. Um, connection add, connection delete probabilities. I have it at 0.5 right now. This is not necessarily the best way to do it, but basically there's a 50% chance that uh, it'll add or remove a connection between nodes in the network. Uh, connection enable options. So I currently have it set to false. So if it creates a new connection between nodes it's currently enabled by default to false and then it has a 50 percent chance of enabling it on turning it on i i don't know i go back and forth on whether or not this is good again all these all these things change stuff so subtly it's really hard to like fine tune it kind of need a neat network to fine tune the neat config file that's something we should work on guys that's what we should do uh we have it set to feed forward false that's because we're currently writing a um Actually, should we do that? Feed forward. Yeah, we're gonna use a recurrent network. Um, it doesn't really matter. I personally haven't seen much difference in the learning rate, but uh, the one that I have that was most successful in Donkey Kong Country used a recurrent network. So we're not gonna use the feed forward. Initial connection is unconnected. That's 
that's intense, but that's that's fine. Actually, let's go see what we did for Donkey Kong because that actually worked a little bit better. One second. Success was done with. Uh, threshold 5000, sigmoid, random, same stuff, false, false, feed forward was false, but it's partial, no, no direct connection. So this just randomly connects some of the nodes that are uh, picked. 50% of the time you get a connection, 50% of the time you don't. Let's, let's go with that. If you go with, if you go with unconnect, oh, there's one right there already. If you go with unconnected right off the bat, you end up spending a couple generations connecting the output, the input to the output, which is it's fine. It's just maybe slower. I don't know. It's hard to say. This is this stuff's fancy. We have um, a node add probability of 0.5 and a node delete probability of 0.2. Um, on this one, same thing. So this is our Sonic one. This is our Donkey Kong one that was successful. Uh, okay, so this is ooh, excuse me. This is an important part here. The network parameters, the number of hidden inputs and outputs. The inputs are what you're going to input to the network. So this is your first layer, and then the outputs should be the number of buttons on the controller or a smaller subset if you have some other method of doing it. Like if you are specifying exact moves that Sonic can do, like running and jumping simultaneously or whatever. I have it set to uh, the number of buttons on the controller. This value here is the um, uh, the, the way we're going to do the number of inputs is by using OpenCV to scale the image down from its current resolution of 224 by 240 to uh, a smaller number multiplied by a smaller number and in grayscale. So I'm pretty sure it's, yeah, we're dividing by 8, so it's 224 what number is that? Let's go here. 224 divided by 8. I can't do math, guys. I can't click buttons. <laughs> Sorry, this works, I swear. 28. Yeah, so 28 and the other one is 30. So we're going to do 28 times 30. And we get 840. <laughs> so that's for the Super Nintendo. 840 is for the Super Nintendo. So that's what we'll have on Donkey Kong here. 896. Guys, I'm drinking. Oh, that's the Nintendo, not either one of those. Anyways, the same calculation for whatever the default resolution of Sonic is. Divided by 8, multiplied by each other, gives us 1120. Okay? We'll talk about this again later when we write it in the network. So our inputs are a scaled down set of pixels for the screen. So a really low resolution um, XY, each image. We'll start with zero hidden layers because we'll let that be evolved and the output will be 12. Um, this stuff's just stuff you can mess with to tune it. Again, I it's, I don't know, these are probably default. Um, the compatibility threshold, this is an interesting one. So if you lower this value, you end up with more species. Um, and if you raise it, you end up with left. The, the, the default for the Zor was 3.0, which I find results in only one species for the ROMs or for the emulator. So I set it to 2.5, that'll give us two or three probably. It's also because it comes out of the same population size. If you only have a population size of 20, you don't want too many species because you'll end up with not enough genomes to test per species. It's Again, it's you gotta fine tune this stuff, it's really tough. Uh, max fitness is that. So after 50 generations of failure, we uh, terminate the species. However, we have a species el elitism set to one. That means that at least one species survives always. This ends up, uh, we always, this often ends up with, we always have with one specific species that doesn't ever die. We can change this to zero, and that means it'll eventually restart from scratch. Elitism, three. So... Uh, we keep at least three of each species kicking around. Okay, so that's how you set up that. Um, that All that information gets pulled into the config thing right here. Uh, wow, it's already 14 minutes. We're going to have to stop this here, guys. We will do the rest next time. Okay, see ya.